Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, this is Chung here again. So, so today, uh, this one, lead code number one thousand eight hundred and sixty-two, sum of of floored pairs. Okay. Um. So this one, you know, it's a it's a pure math problem. You know. So to be honest, personally, I'm not a fan of math problem. But anyway, so let's take a look. So we're given like an integer array nums, right? Return the sum of the floor of this uh, division, right? For all pairs, for all pairs in this in this array. Now, since the answer could be too large, return this module of this, right? So the floor is the return the integer part of the division, right? So this the dis description is pretty uh, straightforward, right? So basically, it asks us to find the sum, the sum of all the uh, the possible divisions between two numbers in this array. So for example, in this num here, right? Uh, so for each number, we're gonna use this number to try to do a division with all the other numbers. That's why we have two divided by two plus two divided by five, two plus two divided by nine, right? And then we have five divided by two, and then nine divided by two, so on and so forth. And then we sum all this thing together, we'll have 10, right? And yes, in the second one, this is an example. We have 49, and the constraints is pretty standard. So the total, the total length is 10 to the power of five. And look, so keep in mind, Notice here, so the range of the number is also 10 to the power of 9, right? I mean, obviously, you know, if we just follow the the, the description, uh, we to use each number to do a division without all the, all the other numbers, this one is going to be O of n square time complexity, right? And this will lead to a TLE, right? So which means we're going to need a, like a better solution for this. Mm, right. So, and how can we quickly, you know, uh, intuition is here. Let's like, given like a number here, you know. How can we quickly find? How can we quickly find? Uh, basically, how many? What are the re basically what are the re results for this number? Right. It means that you know. Let's say we have you know. Let's say this number is is seven. Okay, number is seven, and let's say in this in this num here, in this num here, you know we have what we have. Uh, we have two, uh, two and three, right? Two and three are in this number here, and we have seven. So how can we quickly find the result for the seven, right? I mean, assuming we have this, uh, let's this two number here, right? And and then we have seven here, you know, there could be like some other numbers later. So let's say let's say this one is increasing. It doesn't really matter if it's a, like sorted or not. So ideally, you, as, if you guys can see, so the result for seven is what? So we have, hmm, it's going to be a, if seven divided by two, we have three, right? And then plus what? And seven divided by, by three will be two. Of course, we're going to add like one for it for itself. So the, the result for the seven is going to be going to be six. Right, but we don't want to. But how can we? I mean, quickly find that because we don't want to. Uh, uh, we don't want to uh, in enumerate all the numbers to find it, right? You know, there are like, you know, I think one way of solving this problem is that we can use a Fenwick tree, basically the segment tree, to find. You know, that the segment tree basically can easily help us find the smaller, the smaller count for this number here, right? But you know, framework tree is a little bit uh, hard to, to implement, you know? So, and so actually for this problem, there's like an easier way, you know? So what we can do is that, you know, we can create like uh, quotients, you know, a quotients across for, for each number from, from one to this 10 to the power of nine. And, and for, for each number here, you know, we're gonna populate. Basically, we're gonna populate the potential quotients for for each number from the number itself to to the maximum number. So what does it mean? It means that you know, let's say we have a number two here, right? So we have number two. 
So let's say this one is a is a is a quotient, is a quotient, right? This one is is a is a quotient, and at the beginning everything is zero, right? And we're gonna use the number as its index. Okay, so for two, right? Basically, you know, zero, one, two. So at the index two here, it means that you know, for 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 number two, we're gonna have what? So we're gonna have this this quotient equals to one. So this one is it's gonna be gonna be one instead. So what does it mean? It means that you know, for number two, right? We'll have like a co quotient, right? Divide uh by two here. Right, and then, then we, we just do what we do. We do, we increase we increase this number by the multiple by the number itself, which means that the next one is, is four, right? So the four we also have, have one here. Okay, and then for what for six, we we'll also have have one. And then similar, similar for for three, right? So for three, you know, first one is three, right? We have three, so this is here gonna be a, a one here. And then for six, for six we have what? Six we're gonna have like another one. We increase by one again because, you know, it means that for six we we'll have like two numbers that can give us like a, a quotient equals to one. So here we're gonna instead of one we're gonna ha have two, right? And then so on and so forth, right? It could be, could have like eight, you know, eight or or ten, you know, for two, because it's gonna be for everything, all the uh, all all the multiple of this number, right? It's gonna be one, 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 and then we're gonna, yeah, so on and so forth, and then we're gonna have like it's a co quotient array here, right? And then what can we do? We can just uh, do a accumulation, accumulation of of the quotient here. It means that you know it's gonna be a one, zero, zero, one, two. Three, right? So for five, we're gonna have three, right? For six, we're gonna have like what? Uh, have like uh, five, right? And for seven, right? Since we have we have seven, right? For seven here, you know, the seven itself will seven itself will have one. That's why you know, as you guys can see now here, we we have six, right? And then for eight, you know. Eight, we're gonna have like seven, right? And then nine, maybe if there's no, I think the nine is gonna be a another one here, right? Because you know, for three we have a nine here. That's why we have eight, eight. You know, ten is like, uh, like nine, something like this, right? So now, as you guys can see, right? So for seven, right? For seven itself, actually the 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 accumulation of of this of this quotient array is exactly the uh, the value we're looking for. It means that you know if we if we use seven, we can have like six quotient total quotient across all the numbers here. That's why this uh, this uh, quotient array will help us you know to uh, to accomplish. Right, again you know so. The way it works is because you know, so for each of the numbers in this array here, we're gonna mark the uh, the potential quotients we can get for the uh, for this number, because you know we know uh, because we'll be accumulating the result in the end. That's why you know we only mark the uh, the the multiple. I mean, the multiple of this number with one. So that later on, when we do accumulation, we can get the uh, the correct result, right? Again, right? I mean, if we have like two, four, if it, if there's only one number, let's say there, if there's only one number two here, so we have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, so on and so forth. So if for each place we have one, 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 right? So if you accumulate everything together, we have like one, two, three, four, five. And six, right? And then this accumulation actually is the uh, 
is the result we're, we're looking for. You know, actually, you know, actually, this is going to be a three here. Three, one, right? Uh, five, two, right? Seven, three, nine, four, and then 11 is five, right? Because, you know, if we do accumulation, actually, the range, you know, this one is exactly the, uh, the reflection, right, of the uh, of the boundaries of each of the uh, of each of the each of the the quotients we can get for each of the number here, right? Because as you guys can see, if we have a five here, you know, we'll have like what? We'll have two, uh, two total quotient, right? If we have seven, we we'll have we we'll have three, and if for six is still three, but when we get to eight, we we'll have four. Right, but this is only for one number, right? What if we have have what if we have multiple numbers, right? That's why we we keep utilizing this this uh, quotient array here, you know, and we keep increasing the potential quotients we can get at at a certain point, and then once once that is done, we just accumulate everything together, and then we'll get our final answer, right? So cool. So we can start coding then. All right, let's do it. So the answer is going to be zero, and then we have n equals the. Uh, do we need n here? Probably not. You know. So first we're going to have like a max of the of the max of numbers. So we need a counter. Okay. So the counter is going to be the counter of of nums, right? Oh, and and the, so the reason we use counters is that we, it's going to increase, right? It's going to help us increase the uh, the performance. Improve the performance because you know if there are like multiple numbers, we can simply just increase the number of the counters instead of one every time when we set that quotient array, right? Okay, so this one is going to be a zero uh, max plus one, right? That's the beginning, and then start from the number dot count uh, in the counter dot items, right? So for each of the numbers, like I said, we're gonna uh, mark that at that spot. So that's why I'm gonna have like a multiple, right? I call it a multiple, maybe? I don't know if this is a proper proper name or not. In range of, the, starting from num, right? We stop at the max plus one, right? And then the step is, is number. And we mark this quotient uh, multiple, right? With the count, with the count, okay, and then we do a sum of quotients, okay, and then you know, I will just use like a built-in function in Python. It's called accumulate, accumulate, right? Accumulate. You can also use like you know a for loop. That's pretty easy, right? Quotient. Now we have a sum of quotients. Okay, so in the end, we just need to use uh, enumerate each number and find the the corresponding value in this sum of quotients. Okay. Plus seven, right? Return sum of uh, sum of quotients. Okay. Num right, for num in the nums, right? And then don't forget to do the modular of the mod. That's it, okay. Oh. Okay. Yeah, there you go, right? Um, so the reason this one can pass is it's the time complexity. Let's take a look at the time complexity. You know, it seems like this one is going to be a O of n square time complexity still, right? Because, you know, you know, even though we are having this kind of like step, right? You know, with this kind of num of step here. But, you know, someone can argue that, you know, let's say the test case is something like this. Let's say we have like, they're all one, okay? There are many ones. The nine hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred nine ninety nine thousand nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine one, and in the end, there's like 
uh, ten, like ten thousand. I'm sorry, maybe one hundred thousand. So right. So in this case, you know, actually this step here is always one, right? If we have this one here, right? Something like like this. You know, yes, obviously, you know, if you're only looking at this two for loop here, you know, the step, the inner loop is is also like a linear time, right? But keep in mind that you know the outer loop, the outer loop is, is a counter. So which means that you know in this case actually you know the outer loop is, is, is only two instead of a hundred one hundred thousand. That's why you know this this kind of counter plus this kind of like uh, a multiple step here, you know, the step by uh, increase by the number itself, you know, this one the average time complexity is going to be unlocked in. So I'm not going to the details of how this one going to work because you know for this one for each number here it's, it's going to be a, uh, you know, n plus you know, I think n divided by one plus something, something like that. You know, basically for. For for each number, it will only like jump by by the number itself. That's why it's a log n time complexity, and the, the outer loop is also of n, right? So, yeah. And since we are the outer loop, we're using the counter here, you know. So the total time complexity, regardless of the time the, the test cases, you know, it's the, in average still n log n. That's why it can this one can pass. Mm. Cool. Yeah. Regarding that, you know, the segment tree thing, you know. If you're interested, if you if you're guys interested, you can take a look. I believe they're using a, like similar, similar concept. You know, instead of using this kind of like uh, quotients or sum of quotient thing, uh, it used that segment tree, uh, to store the uh the, the smaller right. Basically, a similar thing right. So similarly, for each of the number here, we can get all the 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 sum, the sum out, the sum of the smaller number than this one right, which is the which is the the quotients that we'll be storing. On each of the node of the segment tree. Um, yeah, but at least re uh, regarding this problem, I think I'll just stop here. And yeah, thank you for watching this video, guys, and stay tuned. See you guys soon. Bye bye.